Welcome to today's live lesson with Mrs. Brown and welcoming back Mrs. Hannah. Ooh, it's good to be back. I'm sure you all missed me. All right, today's live lesson is one on some spelling rules, but we thought it'd be fun to do a quick little warm-up activity with you. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the game Foggle, but this is a Foggle warm-up. You will see a grid of letters to the left of your screen. And we're going to give you a couple minutes to come up with as many words as you can. Um, words, the letters can go diagonally, vertically, horizontally. They can make up a square, so they can be next to each other. There's not really any rules like there are in a word search. Um, so you can find as many words as possible in that grid. And then, what was that? They have to touch them. Yes, the letters do have to touch. Um, good point. You can't use them twice. <laughs> yes. So maybe we can do a quick little example. Like, um, like the word I E Y E because they touch, so that would be good. Yes. Um, and then each letter is worth the point value you see next to it in the key there. So the goal is to get as many long words um, or words with difficult letters as possible because that will improve your score. So we're going to just give you a couple minutes, see how many you can write down. If you don't already have some paper and pencil, go grab some real quick. Or you can type them if you want to open up a Word doc on your computer. And then we'll see who has the highest score. We'll give you a minute to do some math on that, too. So I'm going to start my timer, and let's go with three minutes. If you type them in the chat box, that's okay too, but you want to keep them for your own record because the person with the highest score is our winner. You're going to want to share all your answers. Please make sure you're leaving your webcams turned off right now. Make sure you're using the letters in the grid. Some of you are posting words that I'm not even seeing those letters in here. We have one minute, 13 seconds remaining. Sure they are actual words. All right, 15 seconds. Three, two, one, and stop. All right, so take a look at the words you wrote down and add up the points for the biggest word you found. It could be the longest word or the one with the hardest letters in it. And type those scores in the chat box. Let's see who came up with some high scoring words and then we'll make sure that your word is actually found in that bottle. 
So tell us the word and the point value. Five like, points for Dan. Like when I did I, that's only worth four points. Dan would be correct. I see that in there. Anybody else want to share? Six points. Good job, Mrs. McNinch. Slide. Madison, what was your word? I see it's eight points, but what was your word? Why? Just why? Awesome. W-I-D-E, very good. I found the word doze, so I have three, four, I have a ten point word. I got twelve. What do you have, Mr. Schmidt? Faded, F-A-D-E-D. -E -D. Good job. So far we have one winner, Mr. Schmidt, who can beat him? games like this. There is um, online Bible you can play, test your skills. So that was our example of spelling. Um, you play Scrabble, that's how much each letter is worth when you are creating words on the board. So the harder letters are worth more points. Harder to use the letter P than it is for a vowel. So today we're going to go ahead and just talk about different spelling or grammar mistakes or issues that students sometimes have. So one of the ones that I went ahead and chose is I before E or E before I of knowing which one. And I actually on the internet I found this and I do remember the same little rhyme of I before E except after C. So you can go ahead in the word like friend, belief, shield, peace, but then it's EI in receive because of the C it has to be reversed, so it's EI. When you get ceiling, then the EI. Receipt. Okay? However, just like anything in this world, I swear there's always some exception to it. So there are a couple exceptions. So I want to make sure you guys are aware that once in a while there is an exception to that. But typically it works out really well of having the I before E except after C rule to go ahead and help with your spelling. And as teachers, we're going to kind of keep an eye out for these grammar and spelling things that we're going over with you now, that we see them in your tutorials and in your assignments, that you are submitting them spelled correctly. Especially in English, your spelling should be pretty accurate. Especially with working online, you can always look up the spelling of the word. If you have trouble, or if you're typing in a Word document, a lot of the times your, your words misspelled, it'll underline it for you. So make sure you're going back to look up the actual correct spelling before you submit those. Okay, another word, um, another issue that some students have is the Y rule with plurals. Sometimes you add just an S, other times you have to drop the Y and add ES. So the rule with this is if there's a vowel before the Y, like in monkey, then you add just an S. If it's a consonant, then you'd go ahead and have to drop the Y and add I-E-S. Like in babies, bodies, factories, memories, 
in the chat box, type some other examples for when we would just add an S. This is the simpler of them. Adding an S with something that ends with a Y. So think of a word that ends with a Y, and then to make it plural, we only have to add an S. Squishies, but you just spelled it with an I E S, but you spelled it correctly. <laughs> We're yeah. looking for the Y. We're looking for Y, just the S. We got a lot of I E S words. Those are harder to find the Y. Yeah. Did we write until the end? If you're at a football game and they run a play, that's one play. What if they run two? They wouldn't be plays. <laughs> yeah, but it's the end with a Y, and that there you go. We got plays. There we go. Um, glad, well, let's see. Oh. I definitely suggest you might want to go ahead and use spell check before you submit some of your assignments. Remember, you're looking for something that ends with a Y, you add yes, like voids. You go ahead and just add the Y. Okay, as you guys are typing in, I'm noticing a few of you still have the word student as your name. Remember that you need to click on it and fix it. If you click student, it will go ahead and pop up and you have the option to rename yourself. Go ahead and rename it with your name so you get credit. All right, another spelling, spelling pattern that we sometimes see um, is when C softens to an S sound when it's followed by the letters E, I, or Y. Otherwise, C is pronounced C in um, words that aren't followed by those letters. So we have some examples. The letter C sounds like a S sound or a S when you pronounce ceiling. Or in the middle of the word for bicycle, that C makes that soft S sound. Um, it's a the first C. Yes, sorry, the first C. Like, what are you talking about, the first C, Mr. Trump? Yes. Um, and then the second two are examples of a hard K sound. Um, so we have cook. Craft. You say it out loud. Can you name some other examples for this rule? Some for both, actually. Some with a hard C and some with a soft C sound. Again, <laughs> you are correct. Macaroni, very good. So it doesn't always have to be the start of a word. Is that hard C sound? I'm sure Cohen can come up with one. <laughs> Car, good. What about the soft C? We're seeing some of the <laughs> McChicken, <laughs> crayon, cookies. Good. We got a lot of hard C. What about some soft C? <laughs> How about the word celebrate? C is followed by an E. Sierra soft S. Ceramic, is that what we're talking about? Yep, ceramic, very good. The first C is soft. Yes. Mr. Schmidt's always finding the exceptions to the rules. <laughs> he is our spelling wizard over here in the middle school department. Cookie, yeah, very good. Cell phone, yes, the C is spelling that C. Very good. My niece's name is CC, and we spell it with the, or Cecilia, and it's a soft C. Okay. All right, we have one more spelling pattern for you. A trickier one. G may, that's the keyword here, soften to a J sound, but only followed by E, I, or Y. Otherwise, G has the G, or the, the other G sound. 
<laughs> so we have examples of ginger. There's two G's in there, Mr. Schmidt. They both make the J sound. Yeah. Uh, one's following an I, or the I follows the one G, and an E follows the other G. So both of those G's are correct. Or generate, that E's following the G. Um, otherwise, we have green or glass. Now, there's a lot of examples that would negate this rule or be exceptions to this rule. Can you find some? And then, of course, I'd love for you to find some examples of the rule that does apply. Ooh, look at everybody at this one. Grease, good. <clears throat> Remember, these are G sounds. So was food supposed to be good, maybe? There's someone um, named student that is only typing to me privately, so no one else can see your answers. Make sure you, that you change your settings so you're ch chatting with everyone, not just me. I see you wanted the G-Y-R-O. Technically, that's pronounced Euro. So that's a silent G. That's a big time Green. exception to the rule. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Giant. Giant, good. Yeah, gentle. Guys, I can definitely get some very creative. Yeah, you are. You're getting better as you go along. Gorge. Very good. So we have a guff and a jump sound in that one, Logan. Yep, same thing. A jut sound and a guff sound. I guess you get bonus points for these. We should. Uh, we have some really smart students. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. These are just a couple spelling patterns that we want you to be mindful of. There are many, 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 um, and some of them you're going to explore when you are completing this week's assignment. All right, I'll have another little activity plan for you. We're gonna do a little mini spelling test. So get out a piece of paper and a pencil or open up that Word document, whatever you are using to um, record your Boggle answers on. And we're going to see how good you are at spelling based on the couple of rules we went over with you today. So your first word, you're going to try to spell it. And I don't want you to put the spelling in the chat box. I want you to put the uh, value, the point value of the word you spelled. So once you've spelled it on your paper, look up how much each letter was worth and type it in the chat box. Because if you have the same number of uh, points that I have, we'll see if your word is spelled correctly. Your first word is achieve. Your I E spelling pattern. We'll see if you remember. Achieve. Just the points. Yes, in the chat box. Not the word. Tell us how many points it's worth. It's okay, you can do it in your head if you don't have any paper or open up a Word document right on your computer and you can type it in. Fifteen. Mark, you can do it right on a Word document or open office. Just open it up and type. All right. Looks like you all math. Oh, we have 14. I say I have 15. So we are going to go with the spelling A C H I E V E. I know that there is a C, but that I doesn't directly follow the C, so it's I E, not E I. Achieve. Run on what word do you have next? Worries. Sometimes kids have lots of worries when they go away from home. Worries. Give you a clue, it starts with W, so there's three points. I got the rest of them. Worries. Nineteen. Nine. Where does worries?
do like nine is a pretty consistent number that is correct. It's spelled W O. Yep, Madison or no, Jules got it. W O R R I E S. And the Y <laughs> to I E S. So that is one of our words, worries. Next word we have our C hard and soft sounds. Center. 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 Like the middle of something is the center of it. Remember, you're not spelling the word. I want you to just go ahead and figure out the point. So on the last one, when we had worries, the W was worth three, the O was worth one, R is worth one. So I had the three plus a one, plus a one for the R, plus another one for the other R. That's the concept. We got nine. Yes, nine is correct. C-E-N-T-E-R. Might sound like an S center, but it is actually a C because it is followed by an E. All right, this one might be a little trickier. It is generic. Like an off brand might be considered generic. Or it is generic. Or G sound. Or is it a G? <laughs> oh, did we put a tricky one in there? Dun, dun, dun. Looks like we got mostly 11s. If you have 11, you are correct. Nice job, Cole. Generic G E N E R I C. Generic. 111. <laughs> a whole lot of words in that one. Um, I thought if we were going to write them down, but they put them in the chat box so we could get them. Your assignment for this week is two-part assignments. So you have um, a worksheet that we will send you. It's really just um, all the text that we will send you in an in, in, in momentum message. Um, going over some other spelling patterns that we didn't discuss with you, but you will get to learn on your own and complete some copies or some examples of those spelling patterns. And then you will play a game. And at the end of your game, there's a link here in the Word document for you. Um, you are going to get a score. And we just want you to type your score onto the um, worksheet as well. So it doesn't matter how well you did or if you didn't do well. We just want to know what your score is. So just give us an honest answer. You get credit regardless. Mrs. Brown, if you want to go to that link real quick, just to show them what it looks like. It is linked in the presentation. Okay. The game goes over some commonly misspelled words. So you'll click on that take a quiz. Time the time. Yep, sorry, the time quiz. That's what the direction said. The time quiz. And start. Three, two, one. And so there's 15 questions, and you will answer them. Um, they'll be a little bit different each time you play, and you'll have to choose the correct spelling. Don't give them the answer, Mrs. Brown, in case this is their first question. But just to give you an idea of what it looks like, so you would click on the answer you believe is correct, and it will say, you know, tell you if you were right or wrong. Yeah, okay. Because I believe this was my first question. The seconds go awfully quick. <laughs> Well, a second is a specific amount of time, Mr. Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> Not my seconds. Look at that. All right. So two parts. You're doing the worksheet and taking this little quiz, 15-question quiz, and you're posting your answer, your score as an answer on the worksheet. Is there any confusion? Any questions? 
Our teacher will send this out as an Adventum message to you. You can paste it into a Word doc and then post it yep. in Adventum in the yep. Dropbox. Save it and put it in the Dropbox, just like we have been doing. A few last minute reminders. If you have not contacted your mentor, please do that today. Yesterday started a new mentor week. If you have not, uh, we went ahead and sent out, a, or will be sending out the Google form about our lock-in. Please go ahead and fill it out so we know who is coming. So we can definitely plan. And it seems like most of us teachers have all agreed that we have at least a couple students who have not been filling out all of their tutorials. This definitely will affect your grade, even if you have 100% on everything and do not do your tutorials, it drops you to a 70%, which now you have a C minus in the class compared to an A. So please make sure that you are filling in your tutorials. Yes, once you click on the link, you'll be able to go ahead and go to that website and take it, it, you will find it in the PowerPoint, plus it will also be in the message that your teachers will be sending out to you. Any other questions? The form is for our lock-in. We're going to go ahead and we have a building right next to where we work, and we're going to go ahead and have all of the students that are available to come from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And we're going to go ahead and do some Adventum lessons, but we're going to do some hands-on science. Might even go ahead and need some help recording a live lesson. Yes, we might sure help. So we're really hoping to have a lot of students show up to this. We're planning to have pizza for lunch. That's totally worth the whole trip. Yeah. Brian, if you can't make it, we understand. But if you live close, that may be an opportunity for you to come in and meet some of your classmates and your teachers. Like said, we will be sending out a Google link to you for the lock-in later on today. So please make sure you fill it out. Any other questions? All right. Sorry, right, talk with moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas to find out if you are able to come. We hope so. We have a fun day planned. Yeah. So if you're, if there's no other questions, we're going to go ahead and let you go. And our assignments will be sent out very soon. Thanks for coming.